introduction to the skeletal system. So the bones are organized in this is concentric structure right here. This, and this, this is gonna be called the ostium. In the middle of the ostium, you're gonna see this little hole, which is gonna be called the central canal. We magnify that, that's what you're gonna see right here. And in the central canal in there, you can see three colors. That's gonna be the artery, the vein, and the nerve. And you need these three structures to give nutrients, for example, to the cells that are going to build these bones. What is the name of these cells that build the bones? It's going to be the osteoblast. We have cells that are going to destroy or remove bone. Those are going to be the osteoclast. And then we're going to have a cell that is going to maintain the bone. That's going to be the osteocyte. What am I putting maintain next to the osteoblast? Because the osteoblast will turn into the osteocyte in order to maintain the bone. How can we get different cells in our bones? Because in our bones, we are going to have a stem cell. Stem cells are the ones that are going to have in your bones that will allow you to have different types of cells in your bones. Okay, this a stem cell, in a lot of books, you're going to find that these ones are considered osteogenic cells. So we said that the osteoblast is going to build the bone. How the osteoblast builds the bone? Well, the osteoblast is going to build the bone in this concentric structure right here called the osteons. Where are these cells? These cells are going to be located right there in these spaces right there. So then what you see in red right there is going to be the osteocyte. The osteocyte is right there embedded in the bone. So you're going to have a little hole right there and that cell is going to be inside. So there's a little hole and the cell is inside. There is a little hole, the cell is inside. So the little hole right there in the bone is going to be called the lacunae. Communication in between the different types of little holes right there, that's going to be the canalicula. Okay, and the bone itself is the one that you're going to find in between these spaces, and that's going to be the lamellae. Now, what type of bones can you have? Well, you're going to have this one. It's going to be called compact bone. There's no spaces in there. And then you are going to have this other one right there. As you can see, there are spacings in there. That one is going to be called spongy bone. What is the name of the cell that builds the bone? That's going to be the osteoblast. So how many types of different bones can the osteoblast build? You're going to have compact bone and a spongy bone. That's a spongy, and this is compact. But the osteoblast can also build the bones. Based on the shape, you're going to have flat bones, irregular bones, short bones, and long bones. So then, but based on the structure, you're going to have compact and spongy. But based on the shape, then you're going to have flat, irregular, short, or long. So then if we go over here, we can see a real picture of an ostium using a microscope. You can clearly see here the ostium right there. So if we scroll down right here, this is what I just mentioned, right? Central canal, I mentioned the lamellae, the lacunae, the perforated canals, right? The communications between the cells. That's what we have. And then we also mentioned that regardless of the bone, these ostiums are going to form spongy bone or compact bone, right? And you can see right here, the osteum. Even in the spongy bone, you're gonna have osteons. The reason why we have this structure right there with holes in it is because inside there, we are gonna put the bone marrow. Okay, so then as I mentioned before, the outside, that's compact, but the inside, right, that's gonna be the spongy bone. And why do we need these holes? Because inside there, inside these holes, what we're gonna have is gonna be the bone marrow. The bone marrow is very important because the bone marrow, for example, produces the red blood cells that we have in your body. Now we go to the bone marking. Based on the shape, the bones can be long, short, flat, and irregular. If we scroll down, we have examples of these different bones. This is going to be a long bone. This is going to be a flat bone. This is going to be a short bone. And this one is irregular bone. Now, obviously, each bone has different parts. For example, this is a long bone but it has something round in here. This is an irregular bone, but it has this thing that is kind of like sticking out of the bone. So then these different characteristics that the bones are going to have, they are called bone markings. So then for example, when you have something round like that, you're gonna call that a head right there. Now something that sticks out of a bone, like in this case, for example, then that is gonna be called a process it's right there. So bones are gonna have different bone markings Right here, you can see the table where you're gonna give a description of more or less all the different markings that you can find in the bone. So for example, right here, I mentioned the process. Look, if you look over here, is any bony projection right there. So we scroll down. We are going to talk about the long bone. Only with long bones, you're gonna have these parts. The top part, all this is gonna be called an epiphysis. And all this is also gonna be called epiphysis. 
but this one is going to be called proximal epiphysis because that's going to be closer to your body compared to this one, which is going to be considered distal epiphysis. In the middle, you're going to have the diaphysis. So these names apply only to long bones. Our bones are going to grow, right? So when we are younger, right, we were not as tall as we are now, but little by little, we start growing and growing and growing. The reason why we grow is because in our bones, we are going to have cartilage, especially at the top right here and at the bottom right here. Eventually, this cartilage that we have in there is going to be covered with calcium. Our bones are going to have calcium in here. As we start growing and growing, the calcium is going to be deposited in here like this. So then eventually, they are going to cover this part. And when we cover the cartilage that was there in yellow, that's when we stop growing. That happens more or less when we turn, I don't know, maybe it's like 16 or 17 years old. If you think about it, there's going to be a moment in time in which the, there's going to be the transition between what the blue is and what the golden is. This area of transition is what they are trying to show you right here. And this part right here is the golden. It's just upside down. This is the cartilage and the bone, which is this part right here. And these areas of transition, that's what's going to be called the zone. So you see here, zone of ossification, because in this part is becoming more bone. Eventually, all this bone will going to go over here and will going to cover the entire thing. Obviously, when we are young, there's going to be this area of transition between what is bone and what is cartilage. 